author and the finisher of our faith. Praise the Lord. This exhortation told us that whatever we are passing through now, whatever we are going to pass through, as long as this world is concerned, there are people who have passed through that and survived and came out with testimony of deliverance and freedom and liberation. So, you, myself, no one on earth has any excuse to allow problems, to allow difficulties, call it sickness, call it anything at all that you are going through now, to weigh you down, to defeat you. The scripture said, that we have great crowd of witnesses who will come in the end of the end and tell you that they pass through this thing you pass through and they are complaining and they are blaming god and they are shifting blame and you conclude that nothing is to be done i mean you accept defeat and surrender to the devil problem or whatever you're going through now there are people who have passed through that if you go to the same hebrew chapter 11 he told us that it is by faith or through faith that the children of israel Pass through the Red Sea. So let me ask you a question. Do you have a Red Sea in your life? Is there any Red Sea you are passing through? There are people who will come in the end and give witness that they pass through Red Sea like you are passing now. What do you mean by Red Sea? Red Sea is confrontation from the kingdom of darkness. Red Sea may be a particular sickness. Red Sea may be economic problem. Red Sea may be that your salary is not enough to pay your bill. Red Sea may be that you are about to be ejected out of the house where you are. The children of Israel were ejected out. We are asked to leave Egypt. We are asked to leave, abandon their houses, their comfort zone, to a promised land a land occupied by greater army than the Egyptians, seven great nations, Canaanite, Amorite, Parasite, Havite, just mentioned all the Iaites. They were there. My brothers and sisters, they left Egypt and they were confronted on the way by Red Sea, a sea that has never given way for anybody to cross on the foot. And there was no aircraft at that time. My brothers and sisters, all the people that cross Red Sea, who eventually you will meet in the end of your life, maybe in hell, maybe in heaven, these people will come out and give witness that what you are going through now, your own Red Sea, is either the same or lighter than their own but they cross that red sea do you want me to talk about the wall of jericho i'm just telling you the meaning of the great crowd of witnesses the great crowd of witnesses the wall of jericho was installed to block the children of israel from getting to their promised land i don't know the wall on your way now i don't know the wall that the witches are wizard I don't know the world that are cultic men and women. I don't know the world of idolatry and the evil consultation of your ancestors that is now blocking you from getting married, from enjoying your marriage, from having children, from getting a good job, from living a good life, from succeeding in whatever you lay hand to do. 
it might be a wall of Jericho. This, there are people who have crossed that wall. The Bible called them in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, in verse 1, great crowd of witness in their numbers. The wall of Jericho was a hindrance. I'm not saying that you don't have problem. I'm not saying that the problem you have does not have weight. No, that is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that those who have faith on the finisher finish well, irrespective of the weight of their problem. So our topic is talking about faith on the finisher. Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. My brothers and sisters, there was a time in the children of Israel, in 2 Kings chapter 7 from verse 1, and if we read verse 1, he said that there was famine in Israel, just like there are famine all over the world. Ukraine is fighting, Russia is fighting, there are fighting in Gaza, Israel is bombing Lebanon, so many confusion all over the world. And it is not just affecting the people in those regions, it is affecting all the whole globe, the whole world. There are economic problems. That's what I'm saying. But in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1, a prophet of God came, just like I'm here now. A prophet of God came, just like I'm talking to you now, and said, by this time tomorrow, food will be in abundance. He said something that looked impossible. The person that was in charge of the king's warehouse, king's resources, said no. That even if God opened the windows of heaven, this thing he said will not happen. And he told him that it will happen, but you will not be alive to see it. In verse 20, the Bible said that when food came in Israel, so many things begin to happen. Everybody was rejoicing. The man that was in the gate was thrown upon and he died. He saw it, but he never partook in it. My brothers and sisters, I'm telling you that the same thing can happen now. No matter the poverty in the world, no matter the economic morass, no matter the economic harassment, no matter the mega salary, no matter how your business is going down, no matter the sickness in your body, no matter the sorrow around you, no matter everything that looks impossible in your life, today I assure you that if you have faith on the finisher, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, he will finish your problem. You will not die in this problem. I prophesy to you that even the sickness and disease and infirmity and poverty and suffering and lack in your life will not survive this day's program. In this few minutes we are going to pray. I want you to begin to table the wall of Jericho you have. I want you to begin to mention the Red Sea in your life. I want you to mention whatever is happening. The wall of Jericho will not survive in your life today. People have passed through what they are passing through and they overcame. How did they overcome? Their faith was on the finisher. Their faith was on the person who took them out from Egypt. He will not abandon you in the wilderness. He will not abandon you before Pharaoh. He will not abandon you before the army of the Egyptians. He will not abandon you before the weapons of the Egyptians. You Red Sea must divide today before we finish what we're doing. The Bible said in that chapter 11 of the Hebrews that some people subdued kingdom. What are the kingdom you are contesting with now? The kingdom of witches and wizards in your office, the kingdom of household wickedness, the kingdom of suffering, the kingdom of poverty, the kingdom of marital failure in your family, marital failure in your life. Bible said that there were kingdoms. Listen to me. Everybody here, everybody all over the world, all human beings in the whole world, the Bible said in the book of Job chapter 14 that man that is born of woman is of few days, but are filled with troubles. It is Job that said it. But Job did not die in his trouble. Job was not buried with his trouble. Job survived it. Why? Because his faith is focused upon the finisher. My brothers and sisters, when you focus your faith upon the finisher, you will no longer stagger in God's promises. You will believe every God's promise. 
If God said that you are going to be a billionaire, you will believe it. You will not stagger in the promises of God. The promises of God is here and amen. No matter how strong the armies of Pharaoh are, no matter how violent the Red Sea in their life is, no matter how strong the Red Sea, the Jericho wall blocking you, no matter how strong the kingdom that is presently fighting you, presently harassing you, that I may have killed your father, killed your mother, destroy everybody in your family, let everybody useless, and have confined people to a particular level in your locality, in your neighborhood, where you came from. That secret that killed other people in your family may be likened to the Red Sea, may be likened to the Wall of Jericho, may be likened to the kingdom. There are families that the kingdom in their family is that they don't marry on time. There are people in their kingdom is that they marry, they don't have children. There are people in the kingdom in their family that they will marry, but the children will be useless. That if your child is useless, if you can't pay your bill, that is what we are talking about. These are Red Sea. These are soldiers of the Egyptians. These are Pharaoh. These are war of Jericho. This is what we call kingdoms. But do you know? That in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 33, the Bible says that some subdued kingdom. Think about the kingdom in your life that you want to subdue, because that is where we have gathered. Think about the kingdom of your life that you are going to subdue, because that's what we are going to counter today. The Bible says some wrought righteousness. There are people in their family that before 12 years, they are defied. There are people in their family, nobody married as a virgin. There are people in their family, everybody in their family that start business, the business is destroyed. There are people in their family that nobody has lived a righteous life. All of them are liars, all of them are fornicators, all of them are adulterers. One particular sin captured them. But the Bible said in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 33 that some people came into that family and they wrought righteousness. They live in a righteous way. They live in a righteous way. Some of them obtain the promises. Do you understand what we're saying? You can obtain the promise of God as long as your faith is focused on the finisher. Jesus Christ cannot be subdued, cannot be destroyed, cannot be frustrated. Some people subdued kingdom. Please, let us go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 again. We may even read up to verse 2. Listen to me now. He says, We are for, we are for, seeing we also are compassed, surrounded, about with so great crowd of witnesses. People that have passed through what they have passed through now, and because their faith is on the finisher, they overcame that particular problem that we are going through now. Somebody somewhere in this world around you have overcome what you are going through now. Is it poverty? Is it marital failure? Is it childlessness? Is it sickness or disease? Is it untimely death? What mention what you are going through now? The Bible said there are a great crowd of people, witnesses, who have passed through this thing you are passing through now, and they came out with testimony. It ended in praise in their life. What am I saying? I'm saying that everyone listening to me now should have their faith on the person that will start and finish. Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. Focus on Christ. Ignore your pains. Ignore your problems. They may really exist. The crowd of witnesses of people in the day of Sodom and Gomorrah. Somebody came out from Sodom and Gomorrah alive. Somebody came out from the burning fire alive. Is there any heat in your body? Are you suffering from any kind of thing? I invite you today, focus your attention, let your faith be on the finisher of our faith. 
His name is Jesus Christ. I read Hebrews chapter 12 in verse 1 again for you to understand. Wherefore, see we have seen also. We have all, we are compassed. You know the meaning of compass? Surrounded. Compass. Surrounded about. With so crowd of witnesses. What are we going to do? In order to overcome all the problems in our life. To pass through our Red Sea. What are we going to do? To pull down the wall of Jericho before us. What are we going to do to obtain the promise of God? What are we going to do to live a righteous life? What are we going to do to come out from this trap? What are we going to do to come out from occultism? To come out from witchcraft group? To overcome these witches and wizards that want to swallow you? The Bible said in December verse 1, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us. That is the problem now. That is the main thing. If you have your faith on the finisher, you have to lay aside every weight, the desire to commit adultery, the desire to tell lie, the desire to get yourself in fraud, the desire to get yourself in drug, the desire to get yourself drunk, the desire to say anything that is wrong, the desire to do any wrong, there is a sin that is always coming upon you or coming upon the members of your family or peculiar in the area where you live, in your neighborhood, that everybody falls to that sin. What are we going to do? The Bible says lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us, the sin that is always coming to hold us, the sin that is always coming to bring us down, the sin that is always coming to bring us out of the divine refuge, out of divine security, out of divine protection, out of divine provision, out of divine prosperity, out of divine gain, out of victory, just mention them. There is a sin that each time somebody wants to make a meaningful progress, succeed in life, make it in life. There is a sin that is always coming to lay you down. Bible says, push them aside. Push them aside and join the great crowd of witness who gave testimony that when they were in your situation, God delivered them. When they were in your situation, they overcame it. So my brothers and sisters, this is a great invitation to you. A great invitation to everybody to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. What a counsel. What an advice. Let us run with patience. Let your ambition not take you out of sin. Let your ambition to make it at all costs, not make you to disobey God, to break the commandment of God. No. Anything that will make you to be in a hurry, to get something or to do something, but that thing will bring you to sin. Be patient. Be patient. The people living in the promised land may have lived there hundreds of years. The blessing that God gave to you may be in the hand of other people. The land that God promised the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were in the hand of their enemies. But what is happening even today? Even those enemies around the land, the promised land, we are they able to stop the children of Israel from entering into the land? No. We are they able to stop the children of Israel from establishing into the land? No. We are they able to remove the Israelites permanently from that land? No. We are they, able, we are they stronger even as I'm talking to you? No. 
my brothers and sisters, you will get married. You will get that money. You will get prospered. Your sickness will go. But go get it. Be patient. Don't be in a hurry to do anything that will jeopardize God's blessing or that will make God to move. And you will get blessing, healing, deliverance, prosperity from the devil. And the Bible says the blessing that comes from God make it rich and added no sorrow in it. I'm talking to you. There is a race. The main race is not for you to be the richest man today, to be the most educated person today, as long as it is in the wrong way. The greatest race is to be patient, to get what God wants to give you at the right time. That is why the Bible is what is doing. There is a race. The race we are learning in this world is not the race that you will get something before God gives it to you. It's not the race that will make you to bow down to worship the devil so that you can get the whole world. No, Jesus Christ told the devil, go behind me. You don't need to give me the whole world for me to bow down to you. No, and eventually Jesus Christ got the whole world. Let me read verse 2 of Hebrews chapter 12. He said, looking, present continuous, looking why you are running this place. Why you are leaning aside all weight of sin? Why you are, you are about to get a certificate? Why you are struggling to get married? Why you are struggling to get to your promised land? Why you are struggling to prosper? Why you are struggling to make it in life? Look unto Jesus. He is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. Don't forget our topic. Our topic says faith on the finisher. Let your faith be in Christ. The faith of the prophet that told the Lord in 2 Kings chapter 7 that food will be abundant in Israel. The faith was not on the economy. The faith was not on the government. The faith was not on the whole things on this earth. The faith was on God who can do all things. So my brothers and sisters, there are a crowd of witnesses. There are a great number of people who have passed through what they are passing through, but they overcame. I want to tell you that there are many people today who are spiritual lepers, that whatever they touch, business fell. Whatever, wherever they step upon, that place got defied. They have the spirit of rejection and hatred. Jesus Christ healed the leper. There are people who are blind that they have never seen the person to marry them. They have never seen somebody to marry. They have never seen a blessing that comes from God. Not because they are not married though. They are getting married, but they are married to the wrong person. They are getting money, but they are getting dirty, polluted money. They are getting blessings, but that blessing is what is going to swallow them. So. If you want God to open your eyes today, so that from today, you will begin to see the right thing to see, the right people to see, and begin to walk with your leg to where God wants you to walk to, to your promised land, you will get it. There is a man in the days of Jesus Christ who saw Jesus on the Sabbath and was looking unto him, the finisher of our faith. And Jesus Christ said, stretch forth your hand, even though it was a Sabbath day. And the man stretched forth his hand, and the demons in the hand, the pollution, the defilement, the contaminated, the withered, everything, the life from Christ came there. My brothers and sisters, I invite you today to come and join us, to look upon Jesus, the finisher of our faith. I call upon you today to come and join us. Let us go to Jesus Christ the finisher of our faith. My brothers and sisters, let's run this race with patience. Let's run this race with patience. Let's run this race without sin. Lay aside every weight and the sin that normally, usually comes when you're about to make it. Lay it aside. 
if you succeed in this thing, then begin to look unto Jesus. I told you that Job suffered, 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 suffered. To the extent that everybody around him lost hope. And Job with his own mouth. In Job chapter 14 verse 1 I say, Man that is born of woman is a few days. But those days are filled with trouble. But do you know what happened at the end of the life? Because Job, his faith was upon the finisher. The great finisher. The one that will start and finish. Don't be in a hurry. Don't go ahead of Christ. Follow him step by step. Other people may run faster than you. Other people may have established a lot of things. Those things will collapse. Those things will collapse with time. But when you lay a foundation, solid foundation, how do we lay a very solid foundation? Lay aside every weight and the sin that easily beset us. And run with patience the race that God wants us to run. My brothers and sisters, when you take this kind of decision, no prayer will not be answered. No war of Jericho will stand forever. No Red Sea will stand forever. No Goliath will speak forever. No sickness will survive forever. I invite you. I'm a living testimony. In this race, I've seen people pass me, went far that I don't even see their back again. Gradually, as I avoid sin, as I do things rightly, I meet them and I walk ahead of them. And I'm far away from them today with clear conscience, with a good relationship with God, with sound health, with good things that I need in this life, effortlessly. So my brothers and sisters, I invite you, let us run this race together with patience. Let us lay aside every weight of sin that normally beset us, that normally comes when we're about to make it. Let's fight that sin. Let's say no to that sin. Let us look on the finisher. Let us look on the finisher. Look at what people went to and invest. Look at Babylon today. Look at Lebanon today, I mean. Look at what is happening all over the world. Look at Gaza. Look at all those things. Look at all the scientific discovery in America, in Europe, in what do you call it, China, all Asia countries, African country. If Jesus is not in them, one day they will collapse. My brothers and sisters, science is good. But scientific without Christ in it cannot end well. Let us run this race with patience. Lay aside every weight of sin. I know what I'm telling you. You may think I'm, I'm being hard. No, I'm telling you the truth. Check that sin that easily came upon your father and defeat him. Mother, father, uncle, cousin, people in your neighborhood, in the country where you live in, check those sin. Lay them aside. Fight them. Fight them. Live a righteous life. The Bible said that some people subdued kingdom of sin, kingdom of poverty, kingdom of suffering, kingdom of hardship, and they obtained God's promise. You are the person in your family, in your lineage, in your place that God has marked to obtain your promises, the promises of God. I want to stop here, but I invite you to lay aside every weight and the sin that do it easily beset us. Samson did not do it. He died in the laps of Delilah. How did he die? His two eyes were removed. He was imprisoned. And at the end, when the Spirit of God came upon him, he fought the battle. May the Spirit of God come upon you now. I want you to begin to confess your sin. Ask Jesus Christ to forgive you all your sin. Ask him to give you the grace. What I'm saying may not be easy, may not, may not look easy. But ask him to help you to lay aside every sin that's normally, easily, beset you.
Tell God to help you to run this race with patience. Everybody begin to talk to God. Everybody begin to talk to God. This sickness will go. The Red Sea will go. Everything you see now as a problem will go. The wall of Jericho will collapse. I'm going to pray now. Now ask God what you want. Tell God what you want. Is there any wall of Jericho in your life? Tell God to pull it down. Is there any wall of Jericho in your family? Tell God to pull it down. Is there any wall of Jericho in your place of work, in your office, in your business, in the life of your children, in your marriage, in the life of your husband, in the life of your wife, in the life of your friends, in the life of anybody you want it to be destroyed? Everybody begin to tell God what you want. Tell God to remove this thing. Tell him. Talk to him. Ask him to assist you in the battle. Everybody begin to talk to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to pray for you now. Put your right hand on your chest. Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit everybody here unto your hand. I'm praying, oh God, that things that distract our relationship with you will be destroyed. I decree that every Red Sea, sickness and disease, poverty, suffering, hardship, in the life of all the people hearing me today, will divide. And I pray for grace and strength for your people to pass through that Red Sea on hot. Lord, I am asking that the walls of Jericho, standing before your people, hearing me now, from all part of the world, that that wall of Jericho, call it sickness, call it suffering, call it hardship, call it witches and wizard, call it witchcraft deposit, call it sickness or disease, anything, call it mad mental sickness, call it whatever, call it cancer. I command them to be uprooted like the wall of Jericho in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone here who have not gotten the promises. You told us in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 that some people obtained the promises. They subdued kingdom. I pray that every kingdom that is before us, demonic kingdom, kingdom of suffering, kingdom in our places, kingdom of violence, kingdom of untimely death, kingdom of suffering, any kind of kingdom that is standing out before anybody here, I command that kingdom to be subdued be subdued be subdued in the name of jesus every cancerous problem i stop your movement and i uproot you i decree that pollution defilement contamination in our bodies soul and spirit will be destroyed in the name of jesus i release the power that is in the stripe of jesus to heal everybody here that is sick and to deliver the oppressed in the name of jesus that sickness that you contacted through dream through eating in the dream or drinking any poison in the dream. I command that sickness to wither from the root in the name of Jesus. And I pray that your hand will carry anointing. Every defilement and pollution in your hand, I cleanse them. You will make it in life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.